Assessing the quality and verity behind information has become a very hot topic in recent times. With incorrect information circling at faster rates than ever before, developing skills to understand and identify information is incredibly important. We live in a world of misinformation. In this video, I'm going to try to outline the importance of evaluating information, regardless of how harmless it seems, and the importance of not getting into the tendency of what we call information autopilot. Information overload, one of these things that we've heard about, we've heard about things called the information age. Now, for those of you that don't know what the information age is, the information age is that period between the industrial age where we moved through the industrial age and moved into the information technology age. That transfer, that shift is called the information age. And because of this technology, we have shifted information, the amounts of information has been able to grow like wildfire. Misinformation is nothing new. In fact, as long as there's been money and as long as time itself, people have tried to sell things like snake oils, fake coins, counterfeits, and all sorts of things of that nature. The problem is, is with the information technology that we have available to us and the multi-platforms that we have available, the speed in which this information has come to us is second to none. It's crazy. We have sites that you can sell information on. Alibaba, eBay, Etsy, Amazon. You have news sources, BBC, NBC, Fox, CBS. You have different social media platforms, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. We have all of these different media sources. And because we have all of these different media sources and there's so many venues by which to capitalize on, everybody with an opinion, good or bad, everybody with an idea, good or bad, everybody with an opportunity or has an opportunity to make money can utilize this platform and in many cases for nefarious purposes. Now again, this isn't new. This is something that's gone on for many years. The problem again, as I stated, is the speed at which it comes to us. We watch video after video of people stating information regarding, look at this coin. See this coin? 1960, no mint mark. It's worth thousands. And that's the end of it. 1982 dime, no mint mark. It's worth thousands. Well, if you left it at that, every penny with no mint mark, people would be searching for and thinking they found something. Now, the 82 dime is important, but why is it important? See, the shorts don't necessarily get to that. It doesn't get to all the information. So you get a small snippet of information that people take with it and run. And then what happens is they go to the coin store or they go to a coin show or they talk to people online who are semi-knowledgeable and they're like, well, you don't know because I watched this other YouTuber and they told me that I could find this in my pocket change. I found it. It's valuable. You don't know what you're talking about. And it causes dissension. When they take it somewhere and they try to actually sell it, and they find that, that it's just a common coin. Then the person who's given the crappy information has ruined it for those of us who really want to grow the hobby. Now, I know everybody's waiting for me to say, I'm Frostbite. Go subscribe to my channel. Thumbs up. Yeah. I'm not going to do that today. Because what I want is I want people to be able to communicate and collaborate. If you find my channel valuable and that's what you want to do, fine. But there are so many other people who really want to grow this hobby. What I want to do is I want to connect you with somebody that fits for you. If you're into this hobby, you're a brand new numismatist, you're brand new at coin collecting, you really genuinely want good information, then let us know. We'll talk to you about how to steer clear of certain things, certain sites where they, they give what sounds like good information, but it's just a bunch of facts that don't really have any rhyme or reason. There are people with hundreds of thousands of subscribers that just have them because they present information well. Doesn't mean that they know the information that they're talking about. 
We have groups of people that have two, three, four thousand people who are extremely knowledgeable and really want to help. We have YouTube celebrities, if you want to call them that, influencers, if you want to call them that, that own coin shops. There's fabulous websites and stuff out there meant to help you. But be leery of this misinformation. When you go to sites like eBay, Alibaba, and you find coins, if you're looking for error varieties online, but you don't understand the minting process, if you can't tell me how in the minting process or where in the minting process an error occurred, then I suggest you not be looking at errors and varieties, which everybody gets into because they're fabulous. They're fun to find. It's great to find a repunch mint mark. But how do you know it's a repunch mint mark and not machine doubling? What year did the repunch mint mark stop? What do they look like? What happens if it's triple punched or quadruple punched? How do you know that between machine doubling or ejection doubling? If you don't know the answers to some of those, then I suggest you get with somebody who does. Learn some of the basics, and then let's delve into errors and varieties. If you look up here at the top, killing the hobby is misinformation. It's sites, whether it be social media, stores, whether it be overpricing, these online stores or these media presences that give misinformation and fake uh, premises of what the coins are. You know, they, they show you this cool presentation and they're like, this 1982 set. And you can tell that the coins have been cleaned and polished. You're know, looking at Mercury Dimes or something like that. You can see they're cleaned or polished, but they charge you $25 for it. That's killing our hobby. If somebody wants to make a buck, and they're going to do it at your expense. I want to make sure you get good information. So if you're new to the hobby and you really want good, solid information, if you've stayed this long, you're vested. If you've listened to this whole thing, you're interested. So stay tuned. Right up in the corner, there is a link to a lot of things that will help you in your beginning numismatic hobby. If you're interested in coin collecting, you want to know some of the basics, go click on that. If you're really not interested, I don't really seem to rub you the right way, send me an email. Let me know that you're interested in getting connected with somebody, and I'll make sure I connect you with good people. I don't need you to follow me. I don't need you to subscribe to me. But if you choose to, I want to give you the best information I can. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Frostbite. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope there's something of this that's come value to you. Saturday on the 30th of September, we had a live stream where I opened the floor and just answered questions. If you're interested in listening to that as part of the ongoing piece of this conversation, this discussion, then down in the description below, you'll see that live broadcast. Go click on it, watch it. Look at some of the questions that were asked. I'll be following chat, following the comments post video. So if you have something you want to ask, feel free to ask it there. My goal is to help you enjoy this hobby. It's just supposed to be a hobby. It's supposed to be fun. But do a little bit of work up front, and I promise you it'll pay dividends in the long run. We owe it to the people who've been in the hobby for a while, but we definitely owe it to the people who are brand new. Welcome aboard. If there's anything I can do, let me know. This is Frostbite. Have a wonderful day.